Hey, hello everyone. I just wanted to give a quick tutorial on uh, using a hydraulic press and some safety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two types of hydraulic presses. Um, that's what I have in the shop. This is a very basic uh, hydraulic press from everyone's favorite uh, cheap tool store. Uh, and we're going to go over how this one works as well as the one that I have in the other shop on uh, with, a, with a different type of deck system and different type of hydraulic system. Uh, this is a very, very basic hydraulic press. Uh, we have a couple things just to kind of go over with controls. Uh, the pump here, or the ram, is basically just a bottle jack that you'd use to lift a car up. Uh, we have our hydraulic up right here, or in this case, hydraulic down. So we're actually pushing this ram against the top of the hydraulic press, and that's moving this entire beam down, and these uh, springs try to equalize it out. We also have the hydraulic release right here. So this is just like a normal car jack where you use the slotted end of the handle and you go to the left and that lowers it, or sorry, lifts it back up. Doesn't lower it because it's, it's going the opposite of that. Uh, we have the work deck down here. Now the deck is just basically a girder uh, and we have two plates that can be oriented in a couple different uh, rotations to allow for different shapes or allow for uh, different components to be placed in them to be pressed. Um, so these can kind of go around different areas depending on what we're pressing. Uh, to lift this deck up and down, we do have a series of pins and there's some handles. So this is one that you want to clear the deck completely off when you lift this up uh, to get it to the right height. Now, to do this as a demo, what I'm going to use is I'm going to just use this input shaft with a ball bearing on it. And we're gonna separate the ball bearing from the input shaft itself. To do that, we're gonna use a bearing splitter. So this is a tool that you unthread the rods, you expand out the uh, two blades, you put over the piece of work, and then that, it's hard to do with one hand, but with that, we'll grip, we'll uh, tighten these jam nuts up. That will grip the base of this bearing and pull it off of the input shaft when we apply force to the top of this input shaft. Now to reinstall it, we're going to need basically a long pipe that's got a welded end to it. This is just a, a bearing installation tool. Uh, these come in a bunch of different lengths and diameters. The diameter of this one is just enough to go on the inside race of this bearing. The inside race of this bearing is where the interference fit is between the bearing and the shaft itself. And that's what we're trying to separate is it's just a slightly tighter fit for the bearings inner race against the outside diameter of this input shaft. We also obviously want to make sure we're wearing Z87 approved safety glasses the entire time we're doing this. So let me get this uh, bearing splitter tightened up against this shaft and then we'll go ahead and uh, set our deck. So what we're going for is we're going for the blade portion of either end to be in between the bearing and this gear. This gear is fixed to the shaft. It's all one piece with this input shaft. So we're trying to go in between that so that we can separate the bearing from this. Now, ideally we want to be pressing or pulling, I should say, off of the inner race. Uh, we don't have that option we can't get within there so these roller bearings uh, they do the rollers do cover and go over into this outer race we just want to make sure that we're not fatiguing this too much so now we'll get the deck set and we'll go from there all right so with our input shaft in place uh, i can place it on top of the deck and we can see that we have a pretty good distance between the input shaft and the uh, rod of the, the ram here. So what we're gonna do is we'll lift up the deck a couple pins up, or one pin up will probably be enough to allow for us to come in a little bit closer contact. The stroke on the bottle jack is not that long. Uh, it goes you know, about six or eight inches, but we're gonna be sitting here uh, all day trying to get the ram fully extended to uh, come in contact with our input shaft. So to do this on this type of hydraulic press, we're going to clear the deck, and that involves removing everything off of it to try to uh, A, reduce the weight, but also B, to prevent us for when we lift this up with our handles from tipping stuff off and potentially having it fall onto our feet. So usually it's best to lift up on the handle and go up one 
peg position at a time. We want to double check that the deck is level and we also want to double check that these pins are fully in place and supporting uh, either end of our deck surface and, and in this case we are. Okay, so at this point we're, we're high enough, we're right below the application ram and we have enough clearance to where we'll be able to extend the ram through its stroke and press this bearing off to the right distance. We're only gonna go about an inch. Uh, one of the important things to note is the weight capacity or how much this is going to be acting against the component. This has a 20 ton hydraulic uh, bottle jack attached to it. So we theoretically, if this jams up, can be applying 20 tons of force. That's why you kind of got to respect that this can be very, very dangerous. That's why wearing proper PPE and equipment is very important. Uh, in this case, we're going to center this up and we probably won't really run into where we're going to go off of that much force. In fact, I imagine we're probably only going to do a couple hundred pounds of force, if that, uh, only because there's not that much of an interference fit on this bearing. Uh, one of the other things that I want to note, um, is when you're using a bearing splitter like this, it has threaded rods. You want to install it on the deck to where the rod is fully supported like this. The reason for that is if you were to have it on the deck like so, this end of the uh, threaded rods aren't supported. And if for whatever reason this bearing is really stubborn against this input shaft, it can run the risk of bending these threaded rods. So it's really important that we have it fixated on, fixed on the, de on the deck so that we're supporting the threaded rods completely. Uh, that will you know, allow these tools to live a long life. And these are surprisingly expensive. This bearing splitter is actually more expensive than this entire press, oddly enough. So you wanna to try to keep these uh, well-maintained and, and working well. Um, at this point, we're centered up. So we wanna make sure that our input shaft is as center as we can possibly be with the application ram. Um, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the hydraulic release off. So I'm going all the way to the right to close that off. And I don't have to have the handle at this point, but I'm going to start to press down or apply hydraulic pressure to the ram so we can see the hydraulic ram is starting to go down. Once we get a little bit closer, it's usually a good idea to double check and make sure that we're as centered as we can be. Um, these Hydraulic presses are fairly forgiving. They're really actually nice for like suspension bushings and stuff like that because uh, they can go at a little bit of an angle. Uh, you don't want to, if something's really, really stubborn, you don't want to go at too far of an angle. You can damage your part or you can damage the tool. So you want to make sure we're as centered as possible forward and back. And uh, then we can start uh, pressing this down. Now I'm going to come in contact with it. And at this point, now I can grab the lever, which again, this is just like a floor jack lever. It's going to go in place and I'm going to start to apply some pressure. Now this press, those, those uh, little clicks are normal. That's just the uh, bearing starting to move on uh, the input shaft itself. Now this hydraulic press doesn't have a gauge for the hydraulic ram. Uh, so we really don't know how much pressure is going into it. Uh, so it's really important to be watching the frame of the press. So you kind of want to step back and you want to see, you know, when you're starting to press down, is this starting to buckle or move or do anything to where uh, it's looking like it's struggling. And, and if it takes a lot of effort to press down on the, on the lever, uh, it's probably, you probably need to stop and reassess uh, what you're doing. But at this point we can see we're, we're going down pretty easy. Again, all these uh, cracks and creaks and noises you're hearing are completely normal. So at this point, I have my right hand under it to try to catch the shaft. Um, if not, this piece is gonna go flying. Uh, if you're not careful, you can, uh, you know, obviously this can fit on, hit on your foot or you can damage the part. Uh, so you wanna kind of be wary of that. So I, I was able to have just a little bit of pressure holding the shaft up and, and was able to catch it. And now we have the bearing separate of our input shaft. So at this point, this is, you know, just being a demo, what we'll do is we'll, we will reset our deck height so that we can press this bearing on. So give me a quick second and we'll do that. So I ended up going down two positions uh, from where the deck originally was. And then I have uh, a single one of these deck plates uh, placed on top of the main deck 
to support the bottom of our input shaft. So the bottom of our input shaft is gonna sit right on there. So one of the things that's important is we're gonna be pressing down on this portion. So we wanna make sure that this isn't a fragile component. This isn't for this case. Um, this input shaft is long gone in terms of usability. So it's just a demo piece. Uh, our bearing though, we wanna make sure that it's spinning freely. And then we wanna make sure the bearing installation pipe that we're using is only acting on the inside diameter. So we don't want it to press against this uh, black bearing cage cover. This is just a plastic cover to hold the grease in for this roller bearing. It can't take any force. If you crease or dent this at all, basically the bearing is finished. So we wanna press just on the inner race because the inner race is where we have our interference fit. We also wanna make sure that our bearing insulation tool won't bottom out at any portion of our input shaft, which it won't. So we're, we're good at that point. So we wanna make sure the bearing's oriented correctly. So this bearing, as you can see, has a step in it. And per service information for this, this is a uh, NSG370 input shaft. Uh, and per the service information, this little step has to go down towards the uh, uh, input gear. So we're going to slide it down. And what we're looking for to have this fully installed is there's a snap ring groove right there. So once that snap ring groove is just proud of our inner race, then we know that we have this fully installed. I'm gonna put the bearing over. I'm gonna put our bearing insulation tool over. And then at this point, we're going to tighten our hydraulic feed and we're gonna to start to work this down. All right, so with the hydraulic ram down and extended to contact the bearing insulation tool, there's a couple things we wanna know. One of the things I like to do is I like to, throughout the entire procedure as we're pressing down any type of bearing, is make sure that the bearing spins freely and that there's no binding. If once we start to apply some pressure to this and the bearing binds up, we wanna stop, don't wanna risk wrecking the bearing. The other thing obviously is make sure it's centered. Uh, and one of the things to note is again, this, this hydraulic press does not have a pressure gauge. So we kinda gotta go off a of feel when we start to bottom out. Once this bearing goes all the way down and it's seated against the uh, base of this input shaft gear, we wanna feel how the hydraulic press is feeling. Once it feels like you're coming up against a wall, you need to stop. You don't wanna you know, go full ham on it and keep going, because then that way you, could, you, know, you might damage the press and you, you could hurt yourself. So at this point we're contacted, so we can start to uh, press the bearing down. And again, it's gonna creak and make some noises. That's completely normal. Want to again double check bearings rolling the entire time. Okay, so at this point, it's not easy. I can't, you know, lightly press down on the lever for it to go down. It's starting to get very, very difficult for me to press down on the hydraulic jack. So that's an indication that I've bottomed out this bearing. At this point, we'll stop, we'll relieve the hydraulic pressure. These jacks do sometimes need a little bit of help up. We'll then remove our bearing insulation tool and take a look at our input shaft. So we can see that we do have that snap ring groove uh, fully visible and there's not too much of a gap in between the input gear and the input bearing. Uh, so this is completely installed. So what I'll do now is I'll go over and show you kind of a different hydraulic press and just kind of give you a quick rundown on the controls on that one. All right, so this press is a little bit more traditional on what you'd see in a regular shop. And it has a couple key features that are different from the press that we used before. Uh, one of the first things uh, to note is that the deck goes up and down on a cable system. So we actually have a reel that has a cable that goes around the top of this and lifts the deck up nice and even. So what you do is you take a little bit of tension off these pins and then you crank this up or you crank this down and you get the height of the deck that way. So it's a little less strenuous, kind of nicer in the sense that uh, you're not straining your back at all. One of the other things that this press has that's a little bit different than that other press is we do have the ability with this lever up here to turn down our ram head. Now, this is a really nice feature. I have found though that you don't want to overextend this, especially if you're pressing anything really heavy, because then you run the risk of wrecking these threads. So for this exercise, what we'll probably do is only go out a couple threads 
Uh, we also have the ability with this little lever right here to remove it or loosen this and we can slide the press back and forth and there's uh, another one on the back side as well. Um, but we're pretty centered and where we need to be so we're, we're probably not going to move that around that much. Now this is a 17 and a half ton uh, press so it's a little bit weaker hydraulics than the other system. Um, we also have our hydraulics down here on the base. Now we still have a handle and our release is now a lever. So once we're flipped to the back, we're able to pump and you can actually clearly see that the word pump is on there. And if we flip it back towards the right uh, or the rear of the machine, it says release. So this is the release to uh, allow the hydraulic pressure and the ram to come back up and pump allows you to apply some pressure to it. We also have a gauge on this one, so we can kind of tell how much pressure we're putting into the uh, piece of work that we're going up against. And again, this is a 17 and a half ton uh, ram, so we're going to be going on our interface here, and we don't want to enter the danger zone, uh, which is where we're exceeding the hydraulic limits of uh, the press itself. Now, we're going to use the same bearing and bearing splitter, so I already have this set up and ready to go. Uh, I do have a different deck plate, though. This is an adjustable deck plate. And I have this set up so where we can get the bearing splitter to be supported with the two threaded rods as well as uh, the gear to go through. We do have to go down quite a bit though. We got about two to three inches that we have to lower this down. So I'll, I'll do that right now. With, uh, with this, we're going to want to bring up some tension so that we can get these pins out. with the pins out, we can now lower this down. So we're gonna lower the deck down and we're gonna keep an eye on where we can put the next pin. So we can probably shoot for right about here and we can screw down the ram head if need be. So we'll get the first pin in. Again, so one of the things to note when you're using this style cable pull for the deck, uh, right now our cable is under a whole lot of tension. If we were to try to press against this input shaft to remove this bearing, we'd be pressing against a deck that's supported by only the cable. So it's really important to relieve the cable tension. We wanna make sure that the cable is completely loose. That way we know that the deck is supported by the support pins and we're not gonna snap the cable at all. So from here, it's basically the same process. What the only difference is, is we'll thread this down so we can start the Press head a little bit sooner. But we'll center that up. Make sure our lever's in pump, and then we'll start to apply hydraulic pressure. So we're just now starting to move it. Again, those noises are normal. And as you can see off of our gauge, we're not really applying that much torque. Like I said, it's probably a couple hundred pounds at most because this bearing's not held on that tight. Again, trying to catch the shaft before it falls. Uh, that way we don't uh, run the risk of it falling on our foot or wrecking our uh, piece of work. At this point, we can now go and reinstall it. It's the same exact process as reinstalling on the other press with the exception of just we gotta move the deck uh, with the ratchet in instead of the uh, lifting the deck up. So I don't need to show you that part. But this is kind of just a basic tutorial on two different type of hydraulic presses you can have. Uh, the only other op option of a hydraulic press that you might see out in the field is gonna be a pneumatic press. Um, pneumatic presses typically have the same kind of ratcheting mechanism or cable system for the deck. Uh, but instead of having a manual hydraulic uh, ram to press against the work, you're gonna have a pneumatic pump. And you're gonna be basically put a foot pedal down uh, or release a foot pedal and that's going to apply hydraulic pressure. So it's the same basic theory, same theory with the deck, same theory with uh, you know how you put a bearing splitter on it and, and so on and so forth. So again always make sure you're wearing your safety equipment when you're doing these and uh, definitely give it a shot. One of these tools is a very very uh, essential tool and, and will make your life a whole lot easier. appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and I'll see you in the next